Howdy, this is Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part two of the Beginner's Machinist Toolbox. Now, in the part one, I talked all about the different kinds of boxes and uh, probably told you a little more than you wanted to know, but in this episode, I'm going to tell you what you need to put into the box uh, initially and uh, what is affordable, and then possibly later what uh, you would buy over a period of time as you accumulate tools and you have enough money to buy more tools. I would tell you also to look at Tom Lipton's uh, a box tool. He made a nice video on what to put in the box, so in a way this is a repeat of that. But this is my own slant on it and I'm going to take you back to when I started uh, working as a machinist while I was in graduate school and I had to pay my own tuition at that time after dad died and uh, th that's how I was able to do it by working in a shop so hope you like the video I'm going to start out by showing you some wooden toolboxes which I didn't cover in the previous video before I get on with the video let me stop just a minute here and talk about wooden toolboxes that I did not touch on that really uh, in the first video but here at the Harbor Freight site and I'm sitting at my computer now is a tool chest for really a rather amazing price of $75 and I have seen them in the stores and they actually are pretty nice I'll have to admit and that's what it looks like from the front it even has the mirror up there like the Gerstner chests now let's take a look at the genuine Gerstner here I am at Gerstner and Sons fine wood chests and cases and uh, the web address is gerstnerusa.com but on this site they have uh, their toolboxes and the prices I guess you can order direct from them and I'm really surprised here that you can also order cigar boxes and gun cases and other things but here's the typical one that a machinist would use the $800 uh, I guess it's one, two, three, uh, six or seven uh, drawers. It's about 21 inches wide, and you can get that in several different uh, grades of wood. And there's the journeyman's chest for $1,900, and the Pro Series for $2,400. So, you know, take your pick. They, they are very beautiful chests, all felt lined. So take a look at that website. Shows you how the drawers are made. Their uh, drawer for the machinist book is more in the verti vertical uh, position rather than horizontal like Kennedy. So that's what the wooden toolboxes look like. All right, on with the show. This is the empty Kennedy box, and I always liked the word Kennedy on there in script. I remember that from when I was a young man but let me talk just a minute here this is a good old book here by Sterrett this is the 1955 edition but I think that they had this for many many years but it was it was kind of a, a primer for uh, apprentices and beginner machinists and they supplied these to schools Sterrett had wonderful things for schools charts and all kinds of giveaways movies but in this older Sterrett book and I don't know if they still do this and this is about a 1955 book but they had several pages here where they showed uh, tool sets that were aimed at the beginner. So they call them uh, students and apprentices uh, tool sets. And in the set number 900, and I don't know what they charge for it, but there's a six inch square and a punch and all kinds of calipers and a center gauge. And on the other page, uh, in a wooden box, uh, about the same uh, merchandise and here's yet a third set in a, a folding uh, pouch so notice they used a lot of calipers in those days now I do not know if the latest catalogs show this anymore I doubt it very much you do not need a machinery handbook to start with uh, if you get one cheap or free yes but what you really need is uh, these type of guides here that, that, that just has really all of the common information. There's just so much information that you'll never use in the thick one. Here's another nice one. These were all giveaways. I'm not sure you can get those anymore. And the same thing with charts. Sterrett and all the big companies gave these nice charts out. And uh, those could be kept in the toolbox. Some, some were plasticized so they didn't get dirty. 
When I worked at Osborne Engineering in Bloomington, Illinois, and uh, I was hired there and initially just worked production on turret lathes and drill presses and they made fishing motors under the name of Electropal and they made them for Sears, Wards, Pennies and all those, just different colors and different decals, they were all the same. But uh, I did that production for about six months and this was during the time of the Vietnam War and so one of the machinists was sent up front to the engineering department to work on drawings and uh, so they needed somebody and they saw I think by that time that I could I knew a little bit about tools so I became, they called me a tool maker but I think that was kind of a, a stretch on the imagination but I wasn't required uh, to bring a toolbox but I did because I had that tool chest that dad gave me that's not this one I showed it in the earlier one but it's identical to this so I brought that and I must have brought some other tools that were my dad's but you know I had no money at all at that time it's not like now where you take out a loan and when you go to college and you, and you live in splendor you know I lived in a basement and uh, in abject poverty and liked it but anyway when I started there, uh, the Monday after, I went out to Sears there at the mall. That uh, Malls were a new thing. And I bought this six-inch Craftsman uh, combination square. And it's still perfect condition, a little scriber and everything. So that was a nice square. I brought the, along this one-inch stair at Mike that my dad had given to me when I was in high school. It was used and it was frozen up there. And I worked, year, you know, for months and months and finally got it soaked and, and I still use it. And then I, uh, over the weekend, uh, I went home and went to Herky Hardware in downtown LaSalle and I bought the uh, square head. There's the original box. And they had to order the blade. Didn't even have that in stock. So that was about $15 for the two of them, which was darn near what I earned in a week there. Well, I also brought along uh, one of these throwaway advertising type rulers. And, you know, those are really quite satisfactory. Then I had some charts and things like that, but they were they supplied a lot of tools, you know, in a shop like that. But we used height gauges and vernier calipers, and there were also vernier scales on the index milling machines. Well, you know, they're hard to read, and it's that old crazy 25 graduation, even a, a old eagle eyes has trouble seeing that. So I bought this at Sears also. It's a little, and I still got it, the exact same one, and we would just put them on. To the uh, calipers uh, or whatever we were using and it really helped all right I've told you a little uh, bit too much about that but th those are really the tools that I started with and I probably threw a, a couple wrenches and hammers or something uh, that were still in the basement from my dad let's talk about six inch rules or scales I think I t generally call them rules but Make sure that you get satin chrome, not the older style like this. They, they get corroded and tarnished and hard to read. So I'm going to have to tell you that even a giveaway ruler is probably as accurate as what the average guy can work. Uh, and these are just mass produced. Uh, but the Serrett rulers and Brown and Sharp are machine graduated. So they are better so get yourself a, a six inch that is stiff like this and some flexible ones and there's a metric one at Sterrett also and possibly a, a narrow one and those can all go right here in uh, the top drawer that's where I usually keep them here's a hook rule that is also a drill grinding gauge and that's adjustable or you can take it off if it's in the way that's the double hook some of them have the hook only on one side like that one so I'll, I'll put them all in there even though I don't need them all and uh, j j it's nice to have one of these in your pocket with a pocket clip so they don't fall out when you when you bend over and I got all kinds of those I probably got 50 rulers so you don't need that many but it's uh, you're going to lose some of them also because they're so small you'll end up leaving them on machines and that but it's important we're doing a lot of measuring as a machinist you need squares, all kinds of them, but start out with a 12 inch uh, precision square and you know I like Starrett, I like Brown and Sharp, I like Mitt to Toyo, but here's a brand and I only paid a buck for this at a garage sale, Products Engineering and they are superb tools and you're going to be able to buy them at a reasonable price, so check those out in your catalog and I like uh, 
the the scale where there's eighth and sixteenths on one side and thirty seconds and sixty fourths on the back side. And of course you're going to have a bubble level which you will never use in fifty years and always a little scriber which uh, can get lost if you're not careful. Do not buy unless you get it cheap. This is a real old brown sharp square. You know, I probably got it for free. No, no scriber, no bubble. But it's 18 inches, and this end is broken. And someone tried. This must have come from a school because that's gone through a shear, and somebody tried to shear that. Didn't. Uh, they probably got one a heck of a nick in the blade. But it's nice to have an extra long square like this. Uh, but see how tarnished it is if it's not satin chrome. Now this one will fit in a Kennedy box. Do not get the 24 inch or it will not fit. So I'll put that in the top. Sooner or later you'll need a protractor so watch for one of those. That's a Sterrett I believe, yes. And possibly a center head like this that'll fit on this but that's something you don't use real often so I would say to, to make that optional and I'll put this in the also in the top or these will also fit in a drawer like this pretty well. This is called a double square I also have one of these in a four inch size around here that was my dad so these are real handy. And I absolutely love these little combination squares. That's by Lufkin, and I have one also with a six inch blade. You don't have to have that, but here's a Sterrett with the center head. And this type of square is a mighty handy thing to have, and that's fixed. And you may get it with or without the graduations. And this is a precision tool maker type square. You can also get these. I've got one in the other chest over there that is adjustable for angle. It's called a die makers. You don't have to have that, but if, if you run across one, buy it. It would be awful nice if you bought an entire chest filled with tools from someone that's retiring. Even if it was $1,000 or some what you think of as an outrageous price, it might be a good buy. A protractor like this is real nice. This is a Sterrett, but you can get, and it's pretty well tarnished. But you can get these in a brand called General, and that's a pretty good tool for something like this. So don't uh, turn up your nose at the General brand tools. Depth gauges are handy. Here's one with a hook rule. Here's one with a little bit shorter scale on it. I think that's, uh, that's brown and sharp. You can see the logo on there. Real handy tools. This is the little die maker square that I was talking about that has different blades to go into it and uh, you do not need one of these I'm just showing it to you but it, if you run across one there it is in the original Lufkin box. Years ago we used to use a lot more calipers than what we do now but I like the looks of these little Sterrett uh, outside calipers. I very rarely use an inside caliper, so I would say pass on that unless you find a need for it. But if you're doing larger work, you might need calipers in the bigger sizes like this, but probably not. And if it's real big ones, it's probably going to be provided by the shop. But I certainly do use a lot of dividers, especially like the small ones, but I have uh, bigger ones and some much bigger than this as well. So. Uh, decide what you need before you spend a lot of money on these but you can buy off brands too that are perfectly serviceable and sometimes depending on, depending on what you are doing you might need a, a compass like that and those are cheap enough. Let's talk about micrometers and of course the one inch zero to one inch is what you're going to use the most so get yourself a good one of those good use. You can find these at pawn shops too you know. I have bought things at pawn shops. You probably sooner or later will need a two inch micrometer, but if you go any larger than this, uh, typically the shops are going to provide those, especially when you get up to six inches and so on like that. I still like a digital like this, mechanical digital. They work every time. I use a lot of these in my videos because I can show them to the camera. That, that's why I use them, and, and I, but I do like them, and I just came across another one. They're kind of hard to find. 
you will need sooner or later a this is a Sterrett given to me by Jimmy DeResta you might remember that from another video but there's the micrometer depth micrometer along with a couple rods I really don't particularly like the cases but they take up a lot of room in the toolbox and you probably will have to keep them up in the top you've seen this before and there's a set of four mics and the largest one is uh, three to four along with the standards but this big case mahogany case takes up so much space it won't fit in any of the boxes even in the top so you don't necessarily need that but uh, if you find if you get a good buy on it grab it I am sorry but I don't particularly care for digital micrometers and matter of fact this one doesn't work even when I put a new battery in and all that it it's probably going to work for a day if I fiddle around with it and the next time I use it it doesn't work and I think it's uh, corrosion or something like that and I really don't like anything with batteries it's, I guess I'm just old-fashioned on that but and that's probably a two hundred dollar instrument here's another depth mic that I have but I don't have the extra rods for it and that's a, a sheer Tomiko it is satin chrome so it's nice to read but we got a little bit of corrosion there but that's that's still a nice tool let's talk about calipers I do like these dial calipers no batteries they always work easy to zero out this is even a no brand no name probably a fifteen dollar one and it works great and of course you could get a better one if you wanted the digital ones I do kind of like but we're back to batteries again but one thing I like about them is that you can switch between English and metric and you can easily zero them out so this has been a good workhorse around here at Toyo, but uh, again it needs batteries and uh, so take your choice but I think younger people are going to prefer the digital hi Henry now there are just so many other types of micrometers and it's handy to have an inside micrometer this is only a smaller one goes up to about one inch but you can put that on your want list even if you don't get one right away and uh, again sometimes these cases are more of a nuisance than they are a help but I'll keep that in the case for now in this drawer I keep uh, some of my utility tools and layout tools I like this particular scriber from Randy Richards in the shop and that's carbide on the end there so it stays sharp but there are other types of uh, scribers as well and then it's handy to have a, a magnet and that's a screw starter on the other end and those are a little bit annoying sometimes but to retrieve things that's great and I like this double ended scriber as well however it doesn't fit in the drawer so I'll have to put that on the top but it's a little bit of a nuisance and then some little screwdrivers and here's yet another magnet but it doesn't fit in there so it has to go into the top you can see how quickly things are accumulating and in this little pouch which doesn't quite fit in there and originally I had a set of these that was uh, that fit into a pocket protector if you know what a pocket protector is but there's a, a center punch and a, a magnet and a, a scriber in that set so those are handy and they got pocket clips on them actually this tool is a retractable exacto knife that's handy to have around but I like to have a, an automatic center punch maybe in there and I'm running out of space you can see how this this goes and if you've got other um, maybe put them here sharpies and pencils and other writing devices maybe in here depending on what your needs are and a regular pocket knife if you don't carry one in your pocket in this drawer I like to keep some of the gauges uh, here's a thread pitch gauge and you need one of those both in uh, Imperial and one in metric or maybe you can get one that has uh, both on it I'm not sure uh, possibly radius gauges I don't really use those very often but uh, that's something you might need there's a, a wire gauge for sheet metal but there's all different kinds of these for 
depending on what you're measuring. If you're doing threading, sooner or later you're going to need a center gauge. And if you do Acme threading, you'll need an Acme gauge. And then you always need feeler gauges. And those are available in all different kinds of sets. It's a steric, but you probably can get by with the cheap ones they sell in automotive stores. And it won't be long before you'll have that drawer filled. I have entire drawers filled with telescoping and small hole gauges. I'm going to set these aside because it's almost kind of messy. It's nice to have them in these little pouches. And there's a set of, of small hole gauges that will go to the bottom of a, of a hole. But probably you don't need those. There's another set of those. Uh, you just, just this type, the regular round ball gauges is fine, up to about half inch and then when you get larger than that you you go to the telescoping gauges like this and that other handful that I just had so that probably will suffice you for holes because remember that you can also use your calipers for inside dimensions also in this drawer we might keep a wiggler and a edge finder if you do that kind of work wait before you buy those uh, a tap follower but this might be also kept in one of the drawers where eventually I end up filling the drawers with taps and small drills but I'll set it there for now and then uh, the wiggler could also be bought uh, or center finder in a, in a case like this it's a little more bulky than just laying them out and eventually these cases fall apart anyway but that'll be pretty much that drawer for now and if you got any uh, decimal equivalent charts those are pretty handy just to keep in one of the drawer and I told you in the previous video that on the box a lid here it's a handy place if you have that spring to put your charts and, and all of your little booklets and so on that are related to the to the trade I'm running out of room but it handy to have center punches in all the different sizes but they don't need to be in a pouch I have them all over the place but I'll lay those in there for now and you cannot get enough pin punches in the various sizes because you're going to ruin the little ones before very long so watch out for those but it's hard to buy them used because usually the small ones are always mutilated in, at garage sales and, uh, and auctions but you need a lot of punches in any shop Well, two years has gone by and you're running out of room, so you had to buy the riser, the base here. And these are bigger drawers that can hold some of your heavier tools and more bulky tools. And you need a lot of hammers, but you don't need them all right away. But uh, a lead hammer has always been a necessity for me, but a lot of people are satisfied with a, a copper or a brass, but some kind of soft hammer. And, or, or this type of dead blow hammer for for tapping things but you can see it doesn't take too long before you fill up a drawer like this and then you need ball peens generally in two sizes but not always and then yet uh, another smaller brass hammer and I have long favored this real little brass hammer but there, there you can see I've added 20 pounds of, of weight and almost filled up that drawer you need adjustable wrenches, not all these sizes, but sooner or later you may might want all of them. So I'm going to throw all those in there, but if you get the double enders you can cut down on your inventory. I won't put that in there. And then I use a hacksaw an awful lot, but you can see that it's clumsy and it fills the drawer. This also can be kept at the very top. And then some extra blades someplace around here, I'm not going to put those in. In this drawer, perhaps files, and uh, they're just a standard 10-inch uh, mill file and a little bit smaller one, but you'll, you'll really need more than that, perhaps a rat tail and uh, various sizes, and definitely a file card. And then I also use an awful lot of little files, like uh, needle files or jeweler's files, and those can be purchased in sets as well, so we'll lay those right there. And then there's a lot of deburring to be done in a metal shop, so I like the Noga type that swivels. 
and this one is also uh, commercially made but I, you know I've made up some of these they're just made up with counter sinks and I won't put all of those in there but they are handy and then this is a, a tapered type reamer that you might find and that, that's just Ace brand so we'll put that in there you really can't get enough hex keys and uh, there's metric and Imperial and these are the ball type and uh, which I do like very much these will take up a lot of room but these plastic organizers are pretty good about uh, keeping them straight for you but if you don't have them just right you can't get the door closed and I still like the pocket knife type that you can open and close in, in, in several different sizes You will always need pliers. I particularly like that Bernard parallel jaw, but you need at least one needle nose and a, a regular combination slip joint. And I like that bent one. Had that for a long time. And a diagonal cutters. And then screwdrivers. And I'm only going to lay a few in here, but you need Phillips and Standard. And nowadays you need Torx and all kinds of other brands. But as you get into the bigger ones, you can see they take up a lot of room. I throw a little wire brush in there to clean up things too and another little screwdriver and you might need a set of those jeweler's screwdrivers as well. I have hermaphrodite calipers in a couple different sizes which I find handy from time to time but hold off on those you may never use one and you need tap wrenches in several sizes both of the T-handle type and the straight and it's hard to find good ones now unless you buy the major brands the, the, the discount brands generally aren't very good and you'll be dissatisfied with them. Again, watch auctions, garage sales, Craigslist, eBay, and pawn shops. Those are your major places to buy used quality tools and possibly even want ads. And if you work in a big shop, perhaps you can buy from other people uh, such as older men that are retiring. Over here are some old dental picks given to me by Tom that are handy. And you know, a hone, you might need more than one of those. Or a stone, and again, a utility knife, and always a bottle opener. And believe me, the first day you'll have slivers, so make sure you have one of those. Remember that other machinists do not want you to borrow things from them, and you'll soon see why. Conversely, you will not want to loan tools because what's going to happen here very quickly is you're going to loan your scriber out and then you need it within about a half hour and you have to go hunt for it over to someone else's bench and then when you finally do retrieve it, you're going to find that they broke the point off. So immediately there is bitterness and resentment. So do not be a borrower or a lender. And that's a good rule to live by. You're going to need some oil, but I do, do not really recommend keeping that in the box because sooner or later they fall over and then they just make a mess and all the felt gets soaked. So if you've got liquids, uh, unless somebody's going to seal them, they need to stay on the bench. That goes for Loctite and just about cutting fluids and all of that stuff. You need flashlights. I, I like these little pen lights. I particularly like this one because it's so bright. And then the old utility kind too. And that pretty much concludes it. You need a magnifier and this is one of my major tools and I always put that in the top because there's room for it. So when I open it up that's the first thing that I would see. And it doesn't quite close. You see what I mean? Let's go through the the drawers real quickly now and show you how how fast they got full uh, filled and you might rearrange them this isn't necessarily the order that you would want but uh, it's it's kind of fun and you need to clean uh, uh, your box from time to time because you'll, you'll end up with a lot of taps and dies and drills and cutting tools and I didn't put any of those in there at this time because they will accumulate by themselves those aren't something that you usually need to buy yourself the shop provides the cutting tools normally but if you got carbide inserts and then things like that they also would go in your drawers the combination square is kind of bulky so I'm going to put that back in the top compartment but again there we've got some micrometers and, and here are all of our punches and, and uh, some gauges over here rules smaller squares and uh, 
all of the utility tools here that uh, you'll be using constantly. More gauges. This isn't really a good way to store these calipers, but that's the best I can do for right now, at least for this video. I don't really keep those in a box here on my own workbench because I don't have to secure everything at the end of the day. I can just leave it lay, but you'll probably be in a shop where you have a cleanup time and just have to put everything away and lock it up because some of these tools will have legs. And down here, I'll see already I'm having trouble here getting them open and closed. I got too many tools. So <laughs> there's the Allen wrenches and files in. And like I said, you need a lot more files than that. And then in the bottom, all of the, the heavy tools. And you will need a lot more than that eventually. You'd be surprised how many things that you need. But just start out small and, and, uh, and accumulate them and see what you need. And uh, every birthday and Every Christmas, uh, have a want list. Uh, tell your family what you would like to have for Christmas and give them specific brands too so you're not spending half of the Christmas holiday pouting about what they gave you. So, all right, that concludes this video on what you ought to have in your toolbox. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video.